Good day and welcome everyone to Power Bites. I am your host, Lou Signorelli, and Power Bites is your destination podcast for power generation conversations. As always, please know how much we appreciate you, our listeners. We hope you find our topics both helpful and interesting. There are several ways you can get in touch with the show. You can send us an email at powerbytes at cat.com. That's B-Y-T-E-S. Visit us at Cat Electric Power on Facebook or LinkedIn. But please remember to subscribe to our show wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts if you enjoy your time with us today. You know, renewable power generation, decarbonization, and the energy transition are very hot topics right now. And topics that we have touched on recently as part of our focus on different fuels for use in power generation. So as we continue our focus on fuels, we want to highlight one of particular importance, both from a use case scenario and its completely sustainable nature, and that fuel is biogas. So joining me today via the Cat Electric Power hotline from his home office in Geneva, Switzerland, is Sven Bueller. Sven has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from the Swiss Institute of Technology and 20 years of experience in power generation. After starting his career working as an R&D engineer for gas turbines, he joined Caterpillar and spent the last 16 years in electric power, serving as the sales of prime power products and bespoke power solutions. Sven served the last eight years as a sales representative for large electric power gas products. Welcome to Powerbyte, Sven. We are certainly delighted to have you. Hello, Lou. Great to be here. Sven, when I think about biogas, I'm impressed by both its sources and many benefits, most significantly the reduction in harmful methane gas emissions. From animal waste, crops, wastewater, and even food waste, it seems biogas can be derived from anything organic. Sven, what is biogas exactly? You're right, Lou. As biogas is a mixture of gases, which is produced by the degradation of organic matter. And it can be derived from several types of feedstock, like agricultural waste, municipal waste, sewage or food waste. The beauty is to use this organic waste to create renewable energy. Typical agricultural substrates can be energy crops like mycelage, sugarcane, cassava or other waste like manure, harvest residue or any mix of these. For municipal waste, we will find sewage sludge, grass clipping or food residue. And in the industrial sector, biogas can be produced from food beverage, dairy, starch, and sugar industry. Slaughterhouses and pharmaceutical industries are also good candidates. Hence, biogas can use a very wide range of organic waste and has a great potential. Depending on the material used, the biogas yield and the methane content will change, and therefore the energy output as well. That's very interesting. So how does it become biogas from these different sources? Can you take us kind of through the process? Well, biogas is a byproduct from the process of anaerobic digestion, which is a bit similar to human digestion. And in the process, the material is fed into the digester where different microorganisms are at work. And in the last stage, bacteria like methanogens produce a gas composed of mainly methane and CO2. The sludge, which is remaining, is rich in the nutrients and it can also be used as a fertilizer. At the start, one has to consider what local wastes are available and the different methane yields to select the right digester. Sven, it wasn't too long ago, and probably to a lesser extent today, we might have seen these gases just released into the atmosphere or even flared. I remember driving along the highway as a kid and seeing these flares along the highway that were the landfills. I understand that we can use that biogas today as a fuel, right? You're correct, Lou. We can and we should use it. Biogas contains methane, which is a strong greenhouse potential, and it's key to use it instead of releasing it to the atmosphere. Of course, flares are part of biogas plant equipment and should only be used to prevent the gas to escape if it cannot be used because of maintenance work or because of very poor biogas quality. Unfortunately, in some locations, these biogas are still flared due to lack of finance or incentives, or in landfill, biogas is escaping to the atmosphere due to improper site design and management. The goal of the waste to energy application, though, is really to capture this gas, to refine it and to use it 
for example, in gas generators where it can be converted in useful energy. So Sven, take us through what are some of the most prevalent uses of biogas fuels? Biogas can be used in several ways. One pass, which is quite common today, is the production of biomethane, which is a purified biogas after removal of the CO2, the hydrogen sulfide and the moisture. Biomethane is then injected into national gas grids and can be used by gas consumers for typical use like heating or in combined heat and power applications. Biomethane is a renewable gas and it displaces the use of fossil fuel like natural gas and is compatible with our cat gas engine portfolio. Of course, biogas can also be used directly as a fuel to power gas gen sets, providing renewable power and heat. Thanks to the on-site power production, it enhances the site resilience towards an egress outage and reduces its reliance on the local electric purchase, electricity purchase. In most cases, biogas installations include a combined heat and power solution, which is exploiting the waste heat of the genset. This heat can be then applied to the anaerobic digester to support the production of the biogas, but can also be used to replace the heat production from nearby coal or oil-fired boilers to supply the hot water, for example. Hence, the energy efficiency of the whole process is increased substantially and we can displace more fossil fuel. That's very interesting. Do you happen to have a project example for us? Sure, yeah, we have plenty. Let's have a look at the example of the Gabel Asfar wastewater treatment plant in Egypt. Thanks to a total capacity of 2.5 million cubic meter of wastewater treated every day, it's one of the largest in Africa, Middle East. Of course, processing this volume of wastewater requires a large power consumption, which is a big and significant utility cost for the operator of the facility. The customer selected some CAT CG26016 gensets because of the product high efficiency, the low operating cost and the local service capabilities. And through this power plant, the biogas is converted into 16 megawatt of useful power, which is covering 80% of the plant's own power requirements. That is amazing. That is a huge example. Is biogas accessible or even feasible for smaller businesses? Sure. We have a perfect example of one site, which has grown over the year and is perfectly integrated in the nearby community. It's located in Belgium and collects the waste from different sources, such as the nearby agricultural production, some food processing industries and local communities mown grass. At the start, the site had enough biogas to feed just one 600 kilowatt unit. But today, the waste collected amounts to 50,000 tons, which is then fed into the anaerobic digester and produces about 700 cubic meter of biogas which is roughly providing 1.5 megawatt of electrical output and covers about 6,000 homes consumption. The heat is also recovered to maintain the digester at the appropriate temperature level, but it's also used to dry some wood residue, uh, which is then compacted and used in home stoves. Finally, the digester residue is used and valued as a fertilizer by the local farmer to support the crop growth. Hence, it's a perfect example of circular economy. That is a fantastic example. Thank you very much. So when a business contemplates using biogas, what are some of the considerations they need to take into account when using this fuel? Are there any special handling or maintenance considerations? Well, biogas plants consist of a number of elements like the anaerobic digester for the gas production, the gas treatment components, the energy conversion unit to the gas generator sets and the CHP system. This part is a key piece and, as explained, biogas is composed mainly of methane and CO2, but also has some moisture and traces of hydrogen sulfide or siloxane or other corrosive substances. In regard to the genset and the CHP system, the key consideration relates to the corrosive nature of the gas, which makes it a very tough and pretty challenging application for any machine. We provide guidelines on gas quality and we list out substances and properties of the gas which have to be maintained to ensure a proper operation. This is also helping the plant operator to select and size the necessary treatment for the biogas. Our gas gensets are dedicated for biogas to get the best performance 
but also to withstand the rigors of the application. Among a few changes which we include, we use some specific engine compression ratio to have higher efficiency, or we make adjustments due to site-specific condition to reduce the power D rate. We also use specific material like stainless steel in the aftercooler for improved protection against corrosion. And finally, we can adjust the cooling temperatures to avoid condensation on key components and recover as much as possible thermal heat. We use also specific layouts in heat recovery equipment to optimize the operation on biogas and maximize component life. But beyond the gensets and the power plant design, CAT and the dealer network also developed services to support biogas operator through the life of the project. We can provide specific maintenance plan for the equipment based on the site and the gas quality. Another great service is the CAT Connect Remote Asset Monitoring. You did a couple of podcasts on this topic. And by connecting the equipment to ensure improved condition monitoring, preemptive maintenance and faster reaction to maximize uptime. Every biogas plant is unique, and this is why it's key for a customer to get in touch with their dealers and the CAT sales team to make the right choices from day one and ensure an optimum performance and long life of the equipment. Well, there you have it, folks. I'd like to thank Sven Bueller for sharing his expertise with us today, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Power Bites. For more information on the use of biogas, please go to cat.com forward slash biogas, where you'll find lots of great information, testimonials, animations, and additional resources. In the meantime, if you'd like to suggest other topics for the program or have some feedback to share, please write us here at PowerBytes, power B-Y-T-E-S, at cat.com, or visit us at Cat Electric Power on Facebook or LinkedIn. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Till next time, thanks for listening to Power Bites and have a great rest of your day.